and uh, he'll be here and after we finish if anybody wants to interact you can interact with him uh, it's always pleasure to invite uh, dr moita sharma i think one of the very very big things a society of any society in this world has created uh, is to create uh, a, a registry of rare rare eye diseases a rare eye uh, conditions and uh, many things on this it's just not about uh, having a registry of it it's about a complete change in the mindset of how a society should work for of course conducting meetings and other things we all do but the society should work for bringing in people together uh, to create so, so, uh, so, to create uh, an environment or ecosystem where they can work together to bring in uh, more education into the into this uh, diseases and uh, i don't want to introduce her everybody knows dr moita sharma and her team uh, she would represent the rare eye disease registry in this innovation i think this is one of the very good innovations which happened in the last 2 years thank you so much dr rohit i thought it was a little um, misfit this topic in innovations but you very beautifully put it together in the innovation session itself and uh, yes this is something which uh, very since as it says it's rare eye diseases so it's rarely talked about so um, so i'll be happy to talk about it and before i start talking about it it's it's an idea which was generated by the ideas man dr rohit chetty and so all credits to him and it was the support of sipla because of which uh, we could take it forwards so thank you so much to you all yes So first of all uh, whenever we talk of rare eye diseases everybody tends to think why should we even bother about these rare eye diseases yes it is important to bother about these rare eye diseases imagine a situation where any of your near or dear one had uh, a rare eye diseases and there was no proper diagnosis the doctor told you that there's no proper diagnosis i'm not sure whether what disease it is and the doctor also said that there was probably no treatment for it and he was not sure as to what to do about it so imagine what you would feel so it's the same thing that our patients also feel and we all have come across across patients where we made a diagnosis of rare eye disease and then they kept following us year after year asking us as to doc the, the same question kept coming and they kept asking us is there any new treatment which has come for this and every time we have no answer for that all we do, do is that give, we give some psychological support and we just tell them that some researches are going on and probably in a year or two you would have some treatment and they go back with some hope and then they keep coming to us say, year after year so probably by doing this take in this this initial step we would have some answers for these patients and of course as in our country we know that there are consanguineous marriages uh, so there is an important of genetic analysis genetic counseling so so that at least even if there is no treatment they can plan their families they can plan their career so it's important to know about these diseases and uh, as well as to um, as well as to uh, work more for finding some treatment for these diseases though it's a slow process but somewhere the step has to be taken and that's the step that women of thalmologist society took and that is what i'm representing here today so salute to this lady irene hustles momini who uh, is called the gene genetic uh, she envisioned the fusion of ophthalmology with medical genetics and is a founder of john hopkins center for Hered hereditary diseases according to her every rare eye disease is a piece of mysterious puzzle in ophthalmology and she put the pieces together and she's done a lot of work and we need more and more people like her who do this kind of work so uh, for rare eye diseases this is the step wise approach which has been taken step 1 is the red diagnosis and knowledge of syndrome step 2 is genetic tests step 3 is creation of registries which we are doing step 4 is genetic counseling and step 5 is genetic and other treatment so step 1 is a red diagnosis as you can see though it is called rare eye diseases there are many diseases you will he see here which you do see in your clinics and which you do come across things like retinitis pigmentosa star guards corneal dystrophies this is something which we all are seeing so the knowing of how to diagnose them and especially correlating them with syndromes is very very important just giving an example now this is a igo uh, red uh, special issue which was uh, which was published last year 
in July, where um, where there is a lot of knowledge of these rare eye diseases and syndromes. And when we want to thank IGO and uh, the whole uh, Red editorial team, many of the girls are sitting here who who are responsible for uh, making this happen. And this is a this is first of its kind document all over the world, which talks about rare eye diseases and gives a lot of information. Example being a simple thing like uh, we uh, saw if somebody sees a case of hypertensive retinopathy in a young patient, uh, we, uh, and along with this ret uh, with uh, corneal erosions, posterior lenticulars retinopathy, we have to look beyond. Is it a is it a syndrome? Now, if we look, if we have, have that knowledge where we look beyond and we look for chronic renal failure, sensory neur neural deafness, and ocular and other ocular signs connected to it, then only we would know it's a syndrome. It's an Alport syndrome. So only when we have a knowledge of this would be a, would we be able to diagnose diseases. Similarly, uh, a patient with uh, phaco emulsification with a IOL implantation, anterior vitrectomy under general anesthesia. Now, when we look beyond, we look for uh, things like generalized ichthyosis, mental retardation, spastic paralysis, etc. We know it's a jogren larsen syndrome. So first and foremost step is knowledge of these. And these otherwise, these rare eye diseases get missed. And that is what is important. Uh, similarly, retinitis pigmentosa, it is already known that uh, that there are so many new, uh, known mutations and when, when we know about these mutations, we will be able to diagnose that as to which particular syndrome it is it, with which the uh, retinitis pigmentosa is associated. So it has to be a multidisciplinary approach involving the physician, pediatrician, geneticist and a genetic counselor. Now the step two in this uh, in this in the in the stepwise approach is genetic testing which should be an integral part of the diagnosis whenever such patients come to us the diagnosis that i had shown whether it's retinitis pigment, pigmentosa corneal dystrophy how many of us actually advise uh, genetic testing I feel none of us or very few of us would even think of getting a genetic testing done. Because the big question is, is it actually useful? Why should we get this genetic testing done? Even if we get it done, what is the big use of and how will how will this help the patient? So here, I want to say that this step two has to be taken by all of us and it is not difficult, difficult at all. And because if we take this step two, one is when we know the known mutations, since there are known mutations, we'll be able to make our diagnosis of syndromes better. Second is we will be able to predict whether such a risk is present in the first degree relatives or not. Thirdly, now gene therapies are coming. Now the first gene therapy for eye has been approved. I'll just show you in, a, in the subsequent slide. Now since this is approved and gene therapies are coming and clinical trials are going on, only when we make these diagnoses we will be able to identify which are those patients which need to be directed towards these clinical trials, and we would have a pool of our patients already ready when the gene therapy is there in our country. So uh, this step becomes very, very important. As I said, so many, so many known mutations are already there, and when they're already there, all we need is a little bit of knowledge and advising our patients those genetic testing so that we are able to find out who those patients are who would actually benefit from these treatments, which are actually almost arriving. So step three is creation of registries, which is what the red disease, red, red group has done. And this is a rare eye disease group, which was created two years back by Women of Thelmologist Society. And uh, in this group, we found that there were certain registries which were already existing in some parts of the world, but there was no such registry in India. And even the world, there were very few registries of rare eye diseases. So we thought we should create such registries, and these should be registries at the national level. And this is what the rare eye disease group has started. So the steps in this are going to be uh, national registry, gen genetic testing, counseling, rehabilitation, support groups, and low vision aids. So this is the pilot project which was started where national registries are getting created. And in this phase one has already been done where some diseases have been identified, leads have been identified, coordinators and investigators have been identified, and ethics clearance has been taken. The second phase where templates have been designed for these diseases and now the process of training has uh, has, is getting started for all the investigators and as yet we are ready to enroll investigators so anybody who's interested can uh, can become an investigator for these diseases and they can apply and we can get back to you and third phase is uh, phase of data capture and audits and then analysis of data
So a lot of the, the good thing is that a lot of people have shown interest in getting uh, enrolled as investigators for rare eye diseases, which gives us a lot of hope, which, which we feel that this was a subject which is not being discussed. And since it's now being discussed, so many people are coming forwards to be a part of it. Uh, step four, as I said, is genetic counseling, very important for emotional and psychological support, for family and career planning, and for treatment and research options. Now here I just want to share, just as an example, this is the first gene therapy approved for eye diseases, and it is for a specific mutation of RP for Stargardt's disease. This is not available as yet in India, but it's an intraretinal, single intraretinal injection, which has shown uh, which has shown good results in in certain cases of retinitis pigmentosa, and so this is this is like a this is something which propels everybody uh, into action. That there is gene therapy is now becoming is 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 going to be the next thing which is going to be there for these rare eye diseases. Though these things obviously it's because of after so much research it is expensive, but I'm sure the rates will come down. And these drugs are often called orphan drugs because nobody likes to work on them. These diseases are also orphan diseases, but that's what we all need to do. We need more work on these. So finding the unknown, this is my last slide, I think. Manpower required for discovering the world of genetics is sparse. We have an estimated 22,000 genes, and we know we, over 6,000 single gene disorders and complex diseases, but the causative mutations have been identified in fewer than 4,000 genes. So a lot of, as you can see, a lot of work needs to be done on this. And that's what Red Group is trying to do, and that is what your support is needed for. Time is less. Any questions uh, for Dr. Moita? Wonderful work, and a big round of applause from all of us. Uh, first thing, for the work, the second is for making society also believe in making a collective decision and creating an ecosystem for everybody to take it forward. Dr. Darak, or anybody wants to ask anything? Want to say something? Okay. <laughs> so, by definition, orphan drug or a rare disease is not defined in India. In US and Europe, there's a specific prevalence and incidence of a disease where it qualifies for a rare disease. So, and for the rare disease treatment, there are special incentives by government of US and EU, which is not existing in India. That's why most of the innovation for rare diseases happens in that place. And the clinical trial requirement is minimal for a rare disease. So even if you have, so the last example which I know is a 25 patient single arm study and product was approved. Mm. Okay. So you are right that in India, the uh, as per the regulations, regulations are not favoring orphan drugs and more a lot of advocacy work needs to be done. And outside it's India, in there's a lot of exemption on excises, it's in planning. taxes, So maybe et two, three years down the line, we will have that yes. policy. Yes. I think but you should uh, encourage the government. You're working with the government. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, we will have to also thank CIPLA and one of the first companies uh, yeah. who agreed to fund something which they have no no drug on. Yeah. And none of these, uh, they have directly or indirectly not associated with anything. And I think we need pharma companies like yours to be more proactive into those orphaned areas uh, of it and not always look only from the business point of view. I think this needs also a big uh, thank you. And uh, you people have to be a little more ac more active. I think uh, we have to, you know, we have to think there. I think there are a lot of things which needs to be done. I think after AIOS, I think if you can work on it, it will be really helpful. And uh, the suggestion is, uh, do you correlate phenotypic, genotypic in your program? As of now, no. That will be a second step. Okay. Right now, we are just yeah, collecting the clinical is data. A big challenge. No, but see, whosoever enrolls, there will be phenotypic. He will have done it. He yes. or she will have done it. Then genotypic, whosoever wants to do it, can do it. But uh, if you organize well, I can talk to GSBTM, okay. Gujarat State Biotechnology Consortium. Probably they will do in a research mode, and for a particular disease where they get interested. They can you do it should free. probably include him as one of your advisors. <laughs> as an advisor. <laughs> because his, his knowledge is his phenomenal. Help. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Any, thank you. Thank you.